Hello everyone, my name is Jason Rickerson. Welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series. Today we're going to continue on our discussion about Taylor and Maclaurin series. And in this video, we're going to specifically look at the formulas we derived last time and use them to calculate the Taylor series for specific functions. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into an example. Okay, so recall the Taylor series of a function centered at zero has the following formula. We want to use this formula to find the Maclaurin series of sine of x. So we basically have to calculate all the derivatives we're going to need, evaluate them at zero, and then divide them by the appropriate factorial to find our coefficients. So one of the easiest way to organize this process is to make a little table. So over here I'm going to have my nth derivative of my functions. So in other words my function itself, the zero derivative, is going to be sine of x. And then I'll take the first derivative here, the derivative of sine, is going to be cosine. Second derivative is going to be negative sine of x, then negative cosine of x, and then back to sine of x. And at that point I can actually stop taking derivatives because I see this pattern is going to repeat. So I have a first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and fourth derivative. And that's going to be the first column of my table. But I actually don't use those values for the coefficients because I'm looking for numerical values for these coefficients. In other words, if I put cosine of x for one of the coefficients and plug that in, I would no longer have a power series because I wouldn't have just some constant times x, constant times x squared, so on and so forth. So what I need to do is I need to take those derivatives and evaluate them at zero because the Maclaurin series is centered at zero. So I look at the first one. Sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one. Since sine of zero is zero, I'll have zero here. Then I have negative cosine of zero, so that's negative one, and then sine of zero is zero again, so that process repeats. So I'm going to plug these values in in the formula. So what I'll get is sine of x, that's my function, equals f of zero plus one times x plus zero, two factorial x squared, plus the third derivative is negative one, so I'll have a negative one over three factorial x cubed. Now I'm going to go on to the fourth term here, but now my process is repeating here, so I'll have 0 over 4 factorial times x to the fourth. Then I'll have plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the fifth. So once again, now I'm repeating my cycle here. Plus 0 over 6 factorial x to the sixth. Then I switch signs again, minus 1 over 7 factorial x to the seventh minus so on and so forth. So I've kind of written them all out. Now I want to simplify them and I'll see if I can generate a pattern here. So if I get rid of all the terms with zeros in them, it looks like I only have terms that have odd powers of x in there. And so as I simplify those, I will get x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial plus dot 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 dot. And now I can really see that formula, that pattern developing. So this would be the Taylor series centered at zero for sine of x. Now how do we apply the formula we're not centered at zero? Let's take a look at that. So here's the formula for the Taylor series of a function centered at a. And we're going to use that to find the Taylor series of sine of x centered at a equals pi over 2. So once again, I'm going to build my table. And the first column here is going to be the derivatives. So sine of x was the 0 derivative. That's just my function. Then as before, I had cosine of x, negative sine of x, negative cosine of x, and back to sine of x. Now what's different in this case is now my next column is going to be that nth derivative, but now evaluated at a, evaluated at pi over 2. So if I take sine of pi over 2, I'll get 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Then I'll have negative 1, 0, and 1. And then once again, I see that I'm repeating. Now I'm going to plug all these values back into my formula. So I'm going to have sine of x is now equal to f of a, which is 1 in this case, plus 0 
times x minus pi over 2. And even though that term is going to dis disappear because I have 0 times that, I really want to stress that don't forget to take your value of a and plug it in into these terms here. That's a piece that's often forgotten by students. So I'll go to the next piece. Now I have minus 1 over 2 factorial times x minus pi over 2 quantity squared plus 0 over 3 factorial times x minus pi over 2. Now I have plus 1 over 4 factorial x minus pi over 2. This should be the third power, this should be the fourth power, so on and so forth. And so now if I simplify this piece, I'm going to have 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial x minus pi over 2 squared plus 1 over 4 factorial x minus pi over 2 to the fourth power. And once again, I can see a pattern developing here. This is going to be minus 1 over 6 factorial x minus pi over 2 to the sixth power, so on and so forth. And so now I have the Taylor series for sine of x centered somewhere else, centered at a equals pi over 2. So one thing to note is if we center our series somewhere else, we really do get a new Taylor series. All right, so now we've seen how to apply both formulas. That concludes this video. Thank you.